Sunday of Lent. From wherever you are, it is good to have you with us. It is an honor and a pleasure to be able to pray with, with people from not only Rapids, but, but all around. So again, welcome as we enter into this third Sunday of Lent. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just, and rejoices the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey and the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, 
Keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let us pray. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body, and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of the body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Two very different lessons, or so it seems. The one from Moses receiving the commandments on the mountain, and then Jesus driving the money changers and those who were selling cattle and, and sheep and doves from the temple. And yet, maybe they both speak to how we organize our lives around what's important to us and how we need to organize our lives in order to raise up that which is important to us. When God called the people of Israel out of Egypt, he knew that what he had was a ragtag group barely cohesive. They'd been slaves. They'd been subject to other people's authority. And they really didn't have a common mind of their own. They knew that they had come from another land, that Joseph had been their father. But when all was said and done, it was still a group of slaves. So a lot of the time in the wilderness was spent in creating a family, a nation, in which God would be the center of their life. And it would take time. It would take time for them to understand that their identity was going to be found in the relationship they, that they had with God and that relationship that was lived out with each other and with the larger world. The time in the wilderness was a time of preparation and a time of, of giving birth to a nation. They would become the people of God. They would become the children of Israel during that time in the wilderness. And as a part of that experience, God would give them the Ten Commandments. He would give them the law to love him, to love each other to, as they love themselves. To live life with a set of order. The Ten Commandments weren't just meant to tell people what they could and couldn't do. It was rather God's gift to the people. This is how you should organize yourselves. Around a love for me. Around an appreciation for what I have given you my place in your life. Organize your life around a sense of appreciation that would allow you to take a day as, the re as a day of rest. And as you do that, look at the rest of your life. Look at the relationships you have with your parents, with your neighbors, with the people you work with, the people you share a home with. Order your life accordingly. 
so that you can show respect and honor to one another, so that you have a common expectation of how you will live and how you will share that life and be a community. And that when you fall short, there will be ways to reconcile yourselves, find forgiveness and give forgiveness. Allow the love that you know from God to work through you into the life and the world that you live in. And so really it's no surprise that when we come to the gospel and Jesus enters into the temple prior to the Passover and all the people are gathered around that it's no surprise that he becomes upset that he looks around him and sees a marketplace that's grown up at a place where God is to be worshipped, where people are supposed to come and be able to be the people of God. But what has evolved is a marketplace that sells the people the needs that they, the animals they need to sacrifice in the temple, the money changers, so that the strangers and foreigners can get money in the currency of, the, of Jerusalem. In some sense, it made sense. It was practical to have the marketplace there. But with the marketplace there, it was easy to forget what the temple was all about. It was easy to lose sight of who we are who we're called to be. And so Jesus drove out the money changers and, and the sellers of the animals and birds, trying to create a place where people want, might once again come and enter into a sense of the holy and the sacred, might once again enter into a place where they can meet God. question for us is do we have such a place in our lives or have we cluttered up our lives so much with the everyday activities with the needs to make money or spend money or or do whatever it is we do is there still a place in our hearts and in our lives for the sacred to have a home us to, to retreat every once in a while and be with God and remember whose we are. Have we left space for us to reflect upon what it means to be a people who have an order, who have expectations of what it means to live together and hold each other to those expectations and hold ourselves to those expectations? That it's not right to lie or cheat or steal or disrespect our parents or our family or turn our backs on appreciating the presence of God amongst us and what God has done for us and with us. Maybe the reality is that once in a while we need to have our tables and our rooms overturned and upset to make us step back and ask ourselves, where are we in this journey? Have we gotten stuck? Are we still moving on in that walk with God and with each other towards a new life? Or are we here and feel like we're here to stay? question will oftentimes be put as simply as, have we become settlers where we are? Or are we pilgrims moving through this life and anticipating a life to come that would be vastly different and be identified with God 
and with each other in the fullness of life. God entered into the temple through Jesus and challenged the people to look upon the temple and see it not as a business, but rather as a sacred place to meet him and to meet each other. What about our lives? If we look in the mirror, if we reflect upon our lives, is there space? Are our lives the temple that God created it to be? A place where we might dwell together and be as one. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And now, with one voice and one faith. Let us proclaim our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, in your time, you established covenants with your people through Noah, Abraham, and Jesus, and promised to walk with your people always. In this time of uncertainty, remind us of the covenant we have with you. Help us to walk with you and each other and never lose hope in the relationship with you that brings us life. Good Lord, deliver us. Lord Jesus lived among us, suffered and died with us. We live in a world filled with suffering, pain, and death, and yet we do not lose hope. We lift up those who search for relief and healing, especially Mary, Father Ed Smith, Bob Clearworth Jr., Janine, Jane, Irene, Steve, Crystal, Aaliyah, Joan, Katie Rose, Bob Gardner, Barb Caves, Mike Stromley, Phil Malcolm, and all affected by the COVID virus. Good Lord, deliver us. Lord, you gave Moses the commandments so we might order our relationships with you and each other. Jesus drove out the people from the temple to call us back to you. Call us to return when we fall short or separate ourselves from you and other or hurt one another. Let us be people of reconciliation. Good Lord, deliver us. Lord, you sent your Son into the world to destroy the darkness of our lives and the world. Inspire us with your light. Inspire those who lead the nations of the world. Inspire the leaders of the church, especially Michael, Matthew, and David, to be lights for the world we live in. Good Lord, deliver us. Lord, your Son came into the world to live among us, to lead us through death into new life. Help us embrace your promise of resurrection, not only for ourselves, but for others as well. We remember especially today, James Metcalf and Elizabeth Hill. 
Good Lord, deliver us. Let us pray. Good Lord, deliver us from whatever keeps us from loving you and each other. Forgive us, renew us, heal us, that we might fulfill the dream you have for us and become your children and your family. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. May God's peace be with us now and remain with us always. Send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Look mercifully on this your family, Almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and per preserved evermore. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 